Hi. So before we get started with the video, I just wanted to give a couple quick shout outs to some fellow content creators, iHeart Indie and Dark Tech. Both run very small channels, both are content creators I myself watch, and both deserve a lot of love and I know would really appreciate some views. We'll have links in the link section of the description below to both of their channels, but real quick, let me tell you a little bit about both of them. iHeart Indie, like the name implies, primarily focuses on indie titles. He showcases a new indie game every single day, and handpicks some of the best Steam Direct has to offer. His main thing is that he tries to shine a light on titles that don't get the attention they deserve, which in my opinion is a pretty noble goal. I've discovered a couple games myself from him, and I'm certain there's something there for you too if you want to check him out. Dark Tech, stylized with a V, is brand, brand new to the YouTube game and already has a good handful of videos out. Dark Tech does a decent mix of everything, including Let's Plays, tech reviews, gameplay videos, as well as streaming on his Twitch channel, Monday through Friday from 9pm to 12am. Dark Tech's a really good guy whom I have the pleasure of knowing personally, and he has a bright future ahead of him on YouTube and Twitch, so be sure to check him out and not miss a thing. Again, links to both of these channels are in the link section of the description below, so check them out after the video and tell them our realm sent you over. Now with that, let's get on with the video. The last video I posted was a think bite entitled The Elder Scrolls Catch-22. In that video, I went into my personal history with Bethesda Studios games, what made them so spectacular back in the day, and ultimately why they're not so spectacular anymore. I believe that while once upon a time Bethesda games were innovative, immersive, deep experiences, technology has now outpaced some of their signature elements. And we're now at a point where we want these games to feel nostalgic, but new and updated at the same time. I think this creates a difficult situation for both Bethesda as a developer and for gamers like myself who grew up on their games, hence the name of the last video. Now that's a huge paraphrase, so if you want to check out the initial video, I should have a link in the description below for you. I think you can follow what I'm saying here with or without watching the last video, but it's important that you understand where I'm coming from with this. Because today, in part, we're talking about the new IP Bethesda is currently working on, its place in this current game's climate, and the right potential it could offer. There's been quite a lot of speculation on what this new IP could be exactly but most of it is near unanimous. Starfield. 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 Okay, okay, okay. Let's back up a bit. If you don't know, Starfield is a trademark that ZeniMax, Bethesda's parent company, initially made back in 2013. That's pretty much all we know about it, besides the title. But the timing of the trademark and the implications of the title itself say a lot. Just about everyone is expecting Bethesda to unveil Starfield this upcoming E3, and we're thinking it's likely going to be a science fiction answer to the Elder Scrolls and Fallout. But if you remember from my last video, I had said I wanted to talk about how to break the Elder Scrolls Catch-22, and that is what I'm going to be talking about. But I bring up Starfield because, yeah, it is likely going to be the next Bethesda title we get, at least where I'm standing from. But since we still don't really know anything about this game that may or may not be announced at E3 this year, consider this think bite a hybrid video. It's a kind of wish list for Starfield, but on a larger scale, it's also my two cents on where Bethesda as a developer should go next. Because like I keep saying, I love Bethesda games. I want to see this particular developer do well. And I think they're at a point where they not only need to, but absolutely can. They've had their fair share of controversies lately, but despite that, Bethesda is, in my opinion, still one of the better developers out there, and I think that a shift in their approach to game design could put them in a really good place and result in some fantastic games to come. Now let me proceed by saying this, I'm not a games critic, nor am I any sort of expert on game design. I'm just a guy who plays, talks about, and loves video games. And that's what I've been pretty much since I was a little kid. 
I have no real idea of how easy or hard it will be to implement some of the things I'm going to suggest, and it's entirely possible that my ideas from the perspective of a person who makes games might be bad. But as an end user who thinks way too much about this stuff, I would love to see some of what I'm going to be talking about implemented. Opinions and ideas are going to differ from fan to fan to developer to publisher, but this is, in my opinion, how to fix the Bethesda formula. So before we get into exactly what I think would fix the Bethesda formula, let's start off by cutting to the chase. Bethesda ought to handle context better. To me, that's the whole issue in a nutshell. And I'm not talking about lore. In fact, Bethesda titles have some of my favorite lore in video games. And I think that's one of their strong suits. No, I'm talking about context within the games themselves. Let me explain. In the past, it was enough for players to have a map with a lot of stuff in it that they themselves could then provide the context for. Running around in the world aimlessly with no real direction? Make up the context for why your character is a traveler. Found a random cave with some bandits hiding out in it? Make up the context for why you're there and why you're killing them. This is one of the main mechanics in most, if not all, of Bethesda's past titles. It's the reason modding is so prevalent in the Bethesda community. It's the reason entire YouTube channels exist, more or less, for Bethesda character builds. And it was once one of the things about these games that we all had so much fun with, and still do. But I'll get to that. Consequently, worlds like Skyrim, Cyrodiil, the Commonwealth, and the Capital City Wasteland are actually kind of empty if you look at them. The longer we travel the roads of Skyrim, the more empty this land seems. There's a lot of visually interesting stuff going on, and actual things in these worlds, sure, but there isn't too much to most of it. Assets are reused and repeated in a lot of spots. A legendary weapon can oftentimes share skin with a mediocre one. A lot of different areas look almost identical to one another, and areas to explore are oftentimes only that, areas to explore and then move on from and forget about. Because these games are made so that players have space to come up with the context, they're also made to be moderately blank slates. That in and of itself isn't a bad thing. In fact, it's a lot of fun to create context for these games. I remember writing out entire backstories for my characters in Skyrim, taking moments to stand and have inner dialogue with myself and making up an entire mythos to inject into my character. And I was happy enough to simply pretend that it was all there. But things have changed since 2011. We've had not only bar-pushing technical masterpieces like The Witcher 3, where the context is heavily laid out and our choices have long-lasting tangible effects, but also games like Destiny, where the context is straight up missing from the main story. On top of that, we've had issues like asset flipping come to unfortunate relevance over the years, in which games are literally only assets without context, as well as a growing sentiment that sheer map size doesn't equate to much in an open world game if it doesn't have solid writing to back it all up. This has all changed our perspective as gamers, and in the middle of it is Bethesda, who designs their worlds to be left up to player imagination. It should really come as no surprise then that Fallout 4 was ultimately perceived and remembered the way it was. And don't get me wrong, Bethesda is not, say, Ubisoft. They don't continuously release the same game with the same mechanics and a different skin year after year after year. They aren't, say, Bungie. They haven't deliberately designed a game to be missing content just to sell it all back to us later down the line. And they are not, by any means or stretch of the imagination, even comparable to the likes of, say, Digital Homicide, who infamously flooded the Steam marketplace with carbon copy asset flips, while trying to insist that they were completed products. But I do think Bethesda deserves some criticism for leaving so much in the player's hands. One could argue, too much. It shouldn't be up to the modding community to bring Skyrim up to par to make weapons and armor more varied, to make the game not broken in certain spots, and ultimately to make it feel more engaging. It shouldn't be up to me as the end user to pretend that the story and the dungeons are more interesting than they actually are. And I'm not even going to touch the can of worms that is Creation Club. Broadly speaking, Bethesda games need to handle context better. I'll be approaching the rest of the video from this perspective, and this is where it turns into a wish list for Starfield. 
my desires for the next Bethesda game aren't the obvious things, like better graphics or a survival mode or anything like that. Though some proper cutscenes and more hairstyles in the character creator, that'd be nice. No, what I'm going to be talking about comes from the perspective of Bethesda needs to handle context better. So in that spirit, let's start with more options. This might sound like a no-brainer, but hear me out. Have you ever gotten tired of starting a new game in, say, Skyrim, and having the same default beginning? There's only so much you can do with the whole, you start off in jail thing. I want the ability to set my own backstory, and pick an alternative starting point. I want to be able to set my age at the beginning of the game, and the ability to choose the context of my backstory. Like for example, am I bad at what I'm doing, or am I a legend? Am I a young prodigy, or am I an old hack? Or vice versa. Those are the sort of options that I want. The alternate start mod in Skyrim is a good example of the kind of thing that I'm talking about, and it would serve as a good starting place. And in this vein of more options, I actually want the return of a voiced protagonist, but this time, I want multiple voices to choose from, so that I can get different enunciations in the words being spoken. Theoretically, you'd pick a voice based off of the disposition of your character. Granted, I can already see the problems this could have if the voice acting wasn't decent, but we're talking ideally. I want an expansive dialogue tree that lets me approach any one situation in seven different ways. I want there to be multiple factions that I can choose from, and I want the ability to choose none of them if I so wish, and for that to actually have an impact on what happens to me. Because it goes deeper than just having choices there. I want the decisions that I make to matter. Which brings me to my next point. Meaningful decisions with tangible consequences. Like I said, I want the ability to pick a backstory, but I want it to go deeper than just that. Maybe the backstory I choose affects my skill set at the beginning of the game. Maybe it decides, in part, what people already think of me, and who my available allies are to start with. I said I want to pick my voice so that my words are enunciated a certain way. Maybe that could affect how people respond to me. If I have a voice that speaks kind of sarcastically, maybe people will be offended when they talk to him. If I choose a faction or perform certain actions, it should bar me from joining certain other factions and open up or close entire quest lines for the rest of the game. In other words, I shouldn't be able to do everything with one character. It should be a real decision what this character does, and that should mean something in terms of gameplay. If I get good at one skill, it should limit how good I can get at another. Like, if I'm used to moving around in light leather armor, I shouldn't be able to then be good at moving around in heavy armor, or at least not as good. I should only be able to be really decent at a handful of fields, giving my character a real sense of specialization and skill. The jack of all trades should not be the default thing you end up doing, but something that has to be specifically crafted. And it should imply a real balance of skills. You should be competent in a mix of fields, and therefore versatile but not a real master in anything if you go this route. You shouldn't just be godlike in everything the way it's been in the past, and I think any sort of character you want to make should have this level of thought behind it. To that effect, how I play the character should also have an impact on what the world thinks of me. Killing people should make me less likable, helping people should make me seem friendlier, etc. If I want to, I should be able to alienate everyone and make the world my enemy but I don't think I ought to be able to be everyone's friend. People in real life are like that, so I think the next Bethesda game should be too. Certain guilds, like say a uh, sci-fi Dark Brotherhood-esque Assassin's League, shouldn't be available to the same character who also wants to save existence from destruction. What people think of me should be affected by the choices I make, and the overall story should be dictated by who I am and what I do. Which leads me to the next point. I want a subjective storyline. I remember in Oblivion you were able to join the antagonistic cult the Mythic Dawn early on in the story. I always thought it was too bad that joining the bad guys didn't go anywhere, as doing so permanently kept you from continuing the main story. I always thought it would have been really great to be able to play as the antagonist and help take over the world with the main villains if I wanted to, or to even be like, screw it, you're not taking over the world, I'm taking over the world. That's what I mean when I say I want a subjective storyline. I want the story itself to be affected by my decisions. If I start off with a certain backstory, I want the narrative to reflect it. If I so choose, I want to be able to join the good guys 
or the bad guys. I want to be able to betray whoever I side with in a grab at power or have the choice to not do that. And this ought to affect the state of the world in the end. Heck, I should even have the option to side against both the good guys and the bad guys, and either try to escape the main conflict altogether, consequences be damned, or take control of the world, or galaxy, for myself. Depending on where I'm from and what I am, the story should make sense, and different directions in the narrative should be possible. It should not be like Skyrim, where even the main theme contradicts you if you decide to be bad. It should not be like Fallout 4, where you're sort of shoehorned into a role and told to like it. I want a subjective storyline. And not only do I want a subjective storyline, but subjective quests as well. Like I said earlier, specific quest lines should only be available to specific characters, but even the ones that are available for everyone, and yes, there should be ones that are available for everyone, should be bent ever so slightly by the type of character you're playing as. If someone who needs his family saved from a group of bandits looks to you and sees someone who looks like a bandit himself, he should be apprehensive when approaching you for help, versus if he sees a knight in shining armor. If you look like someone who can't handle a fight, people should be apprehensive about hiring you to help them in a fight. Or maybe you're known for being a death and glory type who just charges into all of his situations head first, and someone needs a person who can be stealthy. That quest giver should have concerns asking you for help. And taking a cue from The Witcher, the quest lines themselves should be like little mini stories, complete with impactful decisions, consequences for going about them a certain way, different outcomes, and like I said before, real cutscenes. Seriously, I want real cutscenes. And that brings me to my next point, the writing. It's hard to admit, but if we're honest, Bethesda games have never had stellar writing. It's never been bad per se, only ever serviceable. And that's because that's all it's ever needed to be. The stories in these games, like the games themselves, have been designed to give you just enough to go off of, and left the rest up to you. But again, looking at something like The Witcher 3, and yes I know I keep going back to this, it is entirely possible to give us rich, emotional writing and still leave room for player input. You can still be an individual in that game. Granted, you can't be a magic-wielding elf or a sneaky thief, but you can still feel like you're dictating where you go with the heavy narrative presence. I think it's probably difficult, but entirely possible, to provide players with a rich, challenging storyline and still leave them room to be an individual. And that brings me to my final point. Individuality. One of the things that have always sold Bethesda games is the prospect of being what you want to be. And despite everything I've been saying, I think these games are good at letting you do just that. Other games do it a little better, sure, but these games do still give you enough to at least make your characters look and feel unique. The problem is, that's only true outside of the context of the games themselves. I've actually talked a lot about this point in my other points. Having a specific backstory, decisions mattering, choosing your own voice, so on. But I haven't talked specifically about your stuff yet. And I do think that where that's concerned, these games leave a lot to be desired. And when an axe or a gun you picked up at the beginning of the game looks identical to a so-called legendary weapon, it doesn't feel as epic having it. And even when you do find something cool that you want to keep and use forever, it eventually gets outpaced by everything else. And so you have two choices. You can either have something that's viable, or you can keep your trusty iron sword or 2mm pistol. After a certain point of seeing a bunch of NPCs with the same stuff as you, and letting go of the things that are uniquely yours, you sort of start to feel like just another chosen one. And like I said, some of this applies to my other points. Now Fallout 4 actually took some good steps towards remedying this. Being able to craft your weapons and armor, for example, and fit them with add-ons for both additional benefits and for some visual flair was really a lot of fun, and it's a feature I think is underpraised. In Bethesda's next game, I'd want to see something like that make a comeback, except make it deeper and take it beyond just the weapons and armor. Let me customize my transportation. Let me make my house the way I want to make it. Just don't go overboard. Heck, let me have a pet and let me be able to name the pet and train the pet and maybe breed the pet. And concerning the weapons and armor, 
If I find a weapon at the beginning of the game and decide to hold on to it, it should level with me, outpacing other identical weapons in the game. And not only that, but there should be a benefit to holding onto it for so long. Like, maybe it feels just right in my character's hands or something. And then yeah, I should be able to continually upgrade my stuff, tailoring my armor with little things to make it look unique and be more effective, something along those lines. I imagine a sort of skill tree for every individual piece of armor or weapon in the game. Think Pokemon. But imagine if the Pokemon had a skill tree and apply that to weapons and armor. Being able to make things individual to your character would go a long way in letting us continue to have fun making the context. Yeah, you heard me right. I never said I wanted that element to go away. I just said Bethesda should handle context better. I love making context for my character. I love having my imagination come into play. That's the whole point of a role-playing game, is it not? It's just... I don't think we should have to pretend it anymore. Instead of making up all this stuff outside of the confines of the game, we should be able to make it all within the confines of the game. And you might say, well, CP, that's what mods are for. And yeah, you're right, mods are great for this. But imagine if so much of what people modded in was already in the vanilla game, how much creative leg room that could give modders. With more of a base to work off of, the sky is the limit. There's always going to be some amount left in your own head, and that's probably for the better. But the more that's there for you to go off of, the more your imagination can run with it, and the bigger it can get. So really, to break the Elder Scrolls Catch-22, I don't think the Bethesda formula needs to be fixed so much as advanced. Things like giving the player as much as they can, and providing a sense of discovery and freedom those are the things that we're all nostalgic for, at their core. If Bethesda could update those ideas, and like I keep saying, go deeper with them, I think we'll have something really great. Now look, real talk for a moment. I understand that this is a lot to ask for, and much of it won't rub some gamers the right way. But the main point is that Bethesda can and should start thinking forward with their stuff. And coming up with new ways to immerse us in their worlds is the perfect way to do that. I think re-examining how they make their games, trying to go deeper, and giving us more and better context to play with is the best way to fix the Bethesda formula and break the Elder Scrolls Catch-22. And I don't know how much of this will line up with whatever Bethesda has in store for us with Starfield nor do I know how possible any of this really is. But we'll see where this whole thing goes. And who knows, maybe some of this will be in Starfield. And don't forget to leave a comment and tell us what you think about some of my ideas for Bethesda games moving forward. Do you love them? Do you hate them? Something in between? And why? I think we could have a really fun conversation down in the comments below about this one. And if you have any ideas of your own for a new Bethesda game, share them. I didn't really talk about specifics to Starfield, so maybe you have some thoughts for how some of this could translate in a sci-fi setting, or just maybe some Starfield speculation in general. Share what you have, and thank you so much for watching. I'm CP, and I'll see you next time, right here on Or. Thank <laughs> you.